hi guys so today we are going to take a very important topic which has been asked recently in a paper that is jipma june 2020 and it is a important topic because it is something which is related to the hydroxychloroquine that is being uh, used very very uh, frequently in this covid time so let us see this question first the question says that what is true about hydroxychloroquine now i'll read the options for you the ophthalmology examination by the indirect ophthalmoscopy every 5 years it causes the bullseye maculopathy by affecting the ganglionic cell layer it acts on the photoreceptors and the adult doses 7.5 mg per kg body weight so before coming to the answer of this question we will see certain facts about the chloroquine and its derivatives first of all this is a very common drug especially in indian scenario where we are using this drug for malaria for the rheumatological as well as the dermatological diseases and that is why everybody was after india for getting this drug so we are concerned here with the bullseye maculopathy which is caused by both chloroquine and the hydroxychloroquine so first important thing is that the bullseye maculopathy is caused by both chloroquine as well as the hydroxychloroquine but the therapeutic doses as well as the toxic doses are different both in the chloroquine as well as hydroxychloroquine so let us see what are the doses so doses if you see the chloroquine the most uh, commonly used is the 3 mg per kg per day it is 3 mg per kg per day and you can remember hydroxychloroquine is near about the double that is your 6.5 mg per kg per day but if you go with the american academy of ophthalmology they say that the usage of the hydroxychloroquine especially if you are using it for a long term now when i am saying long term that means more than 5 years so if you are going to use it for more than 5 years you feel that the indication is for the chronic disease then it should be kept lesser than 5 mg per kg uh body weight per day so 5 remember 5 is the keyword here it should be less than 5 okay now if you talk about the cumulative doses cumulative doses are again different for chloroquine it is 460 grams hydroxychloroquine it is 1000 grams now again if you want to remember easily you can remember it by 500 and 1000 so 460 is nearer to the 500 so it is 500 for chloroquine and double two times hydroxychloroquine contains two digits chloroquine contains one so it is double so it this contains it has 1000 grams of cumulative dosage okay now another important thing is that how it is actually causing it what is the main area where it is actually acting so if you see the histological evidence the first histological evidence that we get in the bullseye maculopathy is the toxicity of the ganglionic cells that is histologically now how it is acting and how it is actually responsible for causing this maculopathy basically these drugs that is your chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine they are combining with the melanin pigment so where it is present this melanin pigment which is present in the rpe layer so basically what is happening it is not only causing damage to the photoreceptors it is first combining with the rpe rpe me we have got the melanin melanin pigment so it is combining with this melanin pigment of the rpe and then what it is causing it is affecting the photoreceptors the rods and cones and it is said that basically they are disrupting the junction if you know the structure of the rods and cones how do we get it we get it like the outer segment and then we have the inner segment then we have the nuclei and then we have the other part so the junction of the outer segment in the inner segment is actually disrupted and then it is also affecting the outer 
the nuclear layer where we can have the nuclei of the rods and cones we have got thinning we have got the thinning of the outer nuclear layer so it is affecting the photoreceptors uh, they are disrupting the junction of outer segment inner segment they are causing the thinning of the outer nuclear layer they are affecting first the rpe layer and they are also going to the ganglionic cell layer the histological evidence and later on you get the whole of the thinning of ellipsoid layer around the fovea so the thinning is too much around the foveal area and that is why we get the typical that dart like appearance dart game like appearance that is called as a bullseye maculopathy now the screening there are certain questions which people should be screened yeah how they be they should be screened when they should be screened what are the high risk factors okay and what things are not used so i told you that rule of 5 is basically applied everywhere so first thing which people should be screened which people should be screened so let's start number one now out of five the first is the people who have been using more than five years if they're using the uh, chloroquine or hydroxychloroquine more than five years then they should be actually screened number two if their daily dosage is more than 3.5 milligram for chloroquine or more than five milligram per kg per day for the hydroxychloroquine they should be screened what about the cumulative doses i told you 460 grams for chloroquine and the 1000 grams for the hydroxychloroquine or you can remember 500 and 1000 and its grams okay then the next if they are having some hepatorenal toxicity if they are having the uh, renal disease if they are having the liver disease from before and what's the fifth one if they are on tamoxifen because that is also accelerating the toxicity so again we have rule of five number one if they are using the uh, drug for more than five years right daily dosage more than 3.5 more than 5 then cumulative dose more than 460 more than 1000 having the hepatorenal disease and using the tamoxifen these are the five things now what about macular disease if the person has the macular disease now let me tell you if the person has already is a macular disease some macular toxicity then that is contraindicated the drug should not be used okay what to talk about the screening the drug should not be used okay now what is the earliest symptom that we are going to get basically it is affecting rods okay rods and cones rods are much more so more effect is on the effect on the, on the rods so the first thing that i am going to get is the nyctalopia that is the night blindness this person will come with the night blindness and obviously because the main problem is on the fovea the macular area this person is going to have the scotoma, central scotoma, paracentral scotoma, especially in the central 10 degree. So it's gradually, gradually, this patient will ultimately have the diminution of vision. But yes, starting feature will be nyctalopia. Now, when should you screen? Now, as soon as you are going to start this drug, we don't say that there will be a maculopathy as i told you that it takes about five years for this bullseye maculopathy to develop but this does not mean that i'll not screen this person because i know that there are chances of maculopathy and it's a very very toxic drug so what i'm going to do i will take the baseline examination i'll do the baseline screening so that we have the records when this person is coming up for the follow-up now what are the things i will need to do for the screening so again i have five things the first will be the visual equity and the dilated fundus examination do the visual equity basic and the dilated fundus examination so that anything which is present from before i can document so that i could get to know what are the changes that have occurred due to this drug okay so that is one number two we must do the perimetry because obviously the functional assessment is important because it is affecting the macular area so humphrey's perimetry first is the visual equity and the fundus second humphrey's perimetry okay basically the central paracentral perimetry you have to do then what else i have to do i have to do the spectral oct because i have to see at the level of the layers where actually it is causing the problem so i will do the spectral oct 
then I will do the autofluorescence and multifocal ERG. So I will repeat visual acuity and fundus I will do, then I will do the perimetry, then I will do the spectral OCT, autofluorescence and then I will do the multifocal ERG. Now if the question says uh, the Emsler grid, the fundus autography, the angiography, then uh, the total ERG these things are not done for the screening. This is uh, specifically said by the American Academy of Ophthalmology. They say that these things need not to be done. The basic five things that you need to done is the visual acuity and the fundus. Then you need to do the perimetry, the spectral OCT, autofluorescence and multifocal ERG. Now what are the things that I'm going to get? What are the things, the symptoms I have uh, discussed, okay? Now, what are the things I will get? First of all, I do the visual acuity and I'll do the fundus examination. Now, when you do the fundus examination, what you are going to see? You are going to see the pigmentary abnormalities because it is basically affecting the RPE layer, right? Then it is also causing the blunting of the uh, foveal reflex okay so you are getting two things because i told you that whenever we have a macular disease the foveal reflex will not be getting you are not getting a healthy shining foveal reflex so you are getting the pigmentary abnormalities and you are getting the blunting of the foveal reflex then if you do the second one okay we have done this what about the perimetry if i am doing the humphreys perimetry obviously i'll get to uh, find the scotomas and they are basically the central or the paracentral scotomas then if i do the spectral oct if i'm doing the spectral oct what is it is going to show oct is the optical coherence tomography so it is actually dissecting at every layer of the retina so what is happening it will should me definitely that there was the junctional problems there was the disruption at the junction of what outer segment and inner segment then it will show me the thinning of the outer nuclear layer and it will also show me the changes of a trophy around the foveal area then if you see the autofluorescence now what to see of the autofluorescence if you see the autofluorescence then it is something like this you are getting you are getting the rpe atrophy okay so in the earlier phases we get to uh, get the increased autofluorescence in the foveal area but if you see finally in the severe cases in the later stages there will be decreased autofluorescence there will be decreased autofluorescence because of the atrophic changes right then what you are going to get in cases of the multifocal erg you are going to get the delayed amplicit time okay so all these changes that you are getting is at the level of retina now see you can get a other question also like this that a patient presents with the fundus finding with the fff finding and he was taking 500 milligram per day hydroxychloroquine so this is uh, at the edge because I, what I was saying that it should be less than 5 milligram per kg per day so if I take a normal uh, weight person who is having 60 uh, kgs weight so it is it should be 300 but he is taking more than this so any person who is taking more than 5 milligram per kg per day is actually prone to toxicity so it is actually 500 milligram that is more so what is the diagnosis of this patient can you see it is the typical bullseye maculopathy now how to find out this see when you see the fundus here you get the typical uh, dart like finding can you see here we get the dark area then you are getting this hypo area and then again you are getting this hyper pigmented area so it, so it is something like this can you see something like this area we are getting now why we are getting this we are getting because of the rpe atrophy which is found here now there is another name this another name of this uh, dystrophy it is also called as abc macular dystrophy so it's very easy to remember abc means it is annular it is benign and it is concentric annular benign concentric macular dystrophy now some people were asking me 
some of the students that ma'am uh, both causes uh, uh, the um, bullseye maculopathy or only the chloroquine so it's not only chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine it is also the clofazimine because nowadays bullseye maculopathy is important so i think this also you should know that clofazimine also causes the bullseye maculopathy but it is um, important and it is more uh, appropriate to use this term with respect to the chloroquine and the hydroxychloroquine okay then another thing is the cone and rod dystrophy in the later stages it is becoming very very difficult to differentiate the this bullseye maculopathy from even this rod and cone dystrophy so this comes under the dd this comes under the dd so what is happening with this person when you see uh, in the fundus of the peripheral retina can you see you are getting lot of pigment mottling and that is resembling the uh, retinal degenerations also that is uh, the kind of maculopathy uh, in the periphery you can say that resembles the tepetoretinal degenerations okay so you are getting so many changes you are getting decreased visual acuity starting with the night blindness then you are getting changes in the fundus that you are getting annular benign concentric macular dystrophy then you are getting changes in the autofluorescence you are also getting changes in the multifocal erg you are getting the changes in the spectral oct so what you should do whenever a person is coming to you then you you should do the baseline screening keep the records and if you continue this drug especially with the cumulative doses which are toxic then after 5 years we should start the follow up and this follow up should be done annually this should be done annually not every 5 years it should be done annually every year by the slit lamp bio microscopy slit lamp bio microscopy right why because i am interested basically in seeing the macula so the best thing that i can use is the 90d lens over the slit lamp that i can use here okay now if you see the question here let's see the question here question says number a of thermology examination first of all they are saying it is indirect of thermoscope which is wrong right and every 5 years this is also wrong because if i the person is a high risk person then i will do after 5 years of using okay annually with the help of slit lens bio microscopy so this option is wrong now if you see the d option adult doses so this is absolutely wrong the dose is actually uh, less than 5 mg per kg per day it should be less than this so these are two absolutely wrong now you are left with b and c so b says that it causes the bullseye maculopathy by affecting the ganglionic cell layer which is partly correct because when you see the bullseye maculopathy histologically the first evidence that you are getting is the toxicity to the ganglionic cells so this is partly correct but if you see the c option it is fully correct it acts on the photoreceptor so this is absolutely correct and rather the first change that you are getting in the spectral oct is the disruption of the uh, junction between the outer segment and the inner segment so i hope now this question becomes very very clear and if you have any doubts please post me in the comment section if you like the video please like share and subscribe and also let me know what are the other topics you want me to make video on thank you and happy ophthalmology